Hi, next up, we're going to show you rate of reaction. Actually, it's a very, very popular topic. In fact, every year you will see one question on rate of reaction. And so I feel that the understanding of this concept of this topic is so important. So I hope this video will benefit you. If you like the video, remember to click like. Now, right now, we're going to tackle all the O-level kind of question. Now, as you remember just now that we mentioned, Speed of reaction is about how fast the chemical reaction takes place. Over here, they say an acid put in a flask. Excess powdered sodium carbonate is added to the acid in the flask. While reacting the mixture, it is fizzling and the flask and the content are carefully put on the pan of a weighing scale. The mass of the flask and its content are measured regularly until just after the fizzing has stopped. Now, you have HCl with sodium carbonate. I will always start off by writing the chemical equation to ensure that I know what is the chemical of uh, reaction that's taken place. Acid plus metal carbonate will give you carbon dioxide plus water plus a salt, which is NaCl. My job is to balance the equation, put a two in front, put a two here, I balance it. I have a guess that's evolved. They say sketch the graph that you obtain the data, label both axes. You are measuring the flask. It's similar to just now what I've shown you uh, just slightly earlier regarding the graph. This is the one. If I stopper it, your chemical, your graph will look like this. If I didn't stopper it, the graph will look like this one because there will be an escape of gas and in this reaction, CO2 will escape. So the graph that I'll be drawing will be this one. They have the axis over here. So um, I'm going to redraw it over at this part. It will look something like this. T per second, the mass of, ma mass of the flask, so I should write mass of flask and content slash kg go from here all the way down, all right, and label the both axes, I'm done. Explain how your graph shows that the speed of the reaction changes over time. So we're going to explain using here how the speed changes over time. Firstly, in the beginning, the chemical reaction is the fastest. Why is that so? Because the reactants are the max have their maximum concentration. So the distance between the reactants is the shortest. Therefore, the frequency of collision Remember the word I keep repeating? Decrease the distance between the particles. So the distance I have said already, so because the, frequ because the frequency of, of collision increases, therefore the rate of reaction is the fastest. But as time goes by over here, as time goes by, the reactants have been used up Therefore, the distance between the particles increases. When they are further away, the frequency of collision decreases. Therefore, rate of reaction slow down. And when all the particles have reacted, the reaction stops. Okay, we finished this year. Next year that they have over here, uh, this portion here, they say pieces of calcium react with a dilute acid to produce a gas. Uh, the reaction completes in five minutes, leaves the measurement to determine the speed. So same thing, in order to determine the speed, we need to either measure the time and the mass of the reactants, how they decrease, or the time and the volume of gas has evolved. So in over here, they say a gas has evolved. So the least of things to measure, I will say time taken in seconds for the reaction to complete. Second, the volume of gas evolved should be collected. Next up, over here, they ask you on the axis to draw a graph on what I've just mentioned here. So I will draw graph T per second volume of gas. Gas is always measured in dm cube. And because the questions here says that they will complete in five minutes, five 
here, go up, flat. Completed this. And Next up is a little bit different for this graph over here. You're given all the graphs and this is the loss in mass. And they say that four students working on three metals, one, two, three, four, four metals here, 0 0.5 mole of the powdered metal in an excess of acid in a large, uh, in a large conical flask and it's measured in 280 seconds. They ask you to interpret this graph. Now you notice that there's one without, uh, for metal one, that is no loss in mass. It also shows that there's no escape of a gas. Whenever a metal reacts with an acid, the gas has evolved as hydrogen gas. So if there is no loss in mass, it means that there's no hydrogen gas evolved. If there's no hydrogen gas evolved, it also means what? There's no chemical reaction means that there's something wrong or I should say there's something with that metal and since this is acid plus metal you notice that this over here um, metal 2 will collect 0 0.2 uh, volume of gas this one will measure about 8 close to uh, 0 0.9 metal 4 is about 1 the only one that is not giving me any mass is metal 1. It seems like there's no chemical reactions taking place. So it, it is a flat line. They say why the total mass of the flask and content decrease in this tree? Ah, I just explained because uh, acid plus metal give you hydrogen gas. Hydrogen gas evolved. Which of this react was the first, which of the metals react was the first to stop reacting? Which one flat line first? Actually it's metal 4. If you notice, metal 4 flat line first. Some people will say, is it metal 1? No, metal 1 didn't even react. Okay, which one stopped reacting first? First to stop reacting. Because metal 4 flat line at this portion. Metal 3 is still reacting, is still producing gas. Metal 2 is just about to start. So the one that first to stop reacting is 4. Which one do not appear to which metal do not appear to react with acid? Metal 1. Hey, thank you so much for watching through the entire video. I hope that you have benefited you and remember to really understand the concept because I can tell you, you'll be very, very useful in future when you continue to learn more about science, okay?